well, January is finally over, but not without giving us one more horror movie just to wrap things up. Oh, God have mercy on my soul. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Brock Upside. Gretel and Hansel was directed by Oz Perkins, and this is the classic story of Hansel and Gretel, but the two kids go to the witch's house and, you know, get eaten by the witch, but darker and spookier. And if you guys are new here and you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you live talking by movies. But anyway, now that January is finally over, we've now begun the month with one terrible horror movie, and now we have one more horror film at the very end of it, which is, you know, kind of appropriate, so, uh, what's this one like, you might ask? Well, for starters, this movie is beautifully shot. You can just tell from the lighting, the composition, and just the overall atmosphere it brings to the film that every single frame of this movie was dealt with with absolute care and precision. It's a very, very visually appealing movie, and I think Sophia Lillis gives a good performance as Gretel, and I think she's just slowly building up this resume of playing these strong horror protagonists, you know, have gone through quite a few trials and tribulations before the horror stuff even begins, you know, whether it be getting thrown out of your house by your mother, or being abused by your father. Now, I really like horror films, but most horror films films don't actually scare me, so I really want a horror film to at least creep me out, unsettle me, make me feel a little disturbed, and I think this movie does accomplish that a few times, but mostly after they've been in the house for a while and just all these red flags begin to build up, you know, like secret passageways, nightmares. So it's one of those movies where the creep factor just kind of slowly but surely escalates as the entire movie progresses, and also one thing I do need to to sing this movie's praise on is the fact that it does not rely on cheap jump scares throughout the entire freaking movie. Now, of course, there are a couple of jump scares in there, but not like your typical Hollywood jump scares, so a serious minimal amount of them I greatly appreciate. Now, I will say this movie is a bit slow, and by a bit slow, there were many times I was kind of glancing over my watch thinking, uh, yeah, can we just, uh, speed this shit up a little bit? And I know that's definitely something that a lot of people aren't going to love about a horror movie, is it moving rather slowly like this. And I've said before that a slow-paced movie doesn't really bother me as long as there's something to keep me interested in the whole thing, and this movie doesn't quite succeed at that, because there were a couple times where I was like, Okay, this is just kind of dragging. Can we just, you know, get a little closer to the witch eating one of these children, please? And also, the dialogue is a bit awkward here. I don't know if it's just the time period that this takes place in. People just spoke in a way that we don't speak nowadays, so it feels weird to us. Or if that's just how it came out from the book. Or if it was just the screenwriters just trying to make these guys sound more fancy. Either way, there are some moments where I'm like, this kind of feels like first draft dialogue, maybe second draft, but I think for the most part any kind of like weird pacing issues or odd dialogue, it's very much worth it when it gets to the finale with the big conclusion, you know, with the witch and the big reveals and things like that, and of course, if you know how the story goes, you know how it will end here, and I do think this movie does have a good conclusion, it does have a nice build-up to said conclusion, so that's one of the things I can say this movie is good at. So, overall, I don't think this movie's gonna be for everybody, you know, it's a beautiful looking movie, and I really like Sophia Lillis in said movie, but, you know, it moves a bit slow, probably even slower for some people. You know, it may not have the kind of horror tropes or just kind of the feel of a horror movie that most people are used to. You know, there are some other horror films out there that are kind of like that as well, you know, that are a little bit slower. You know, not quite just, you know, boom in your face monsters and stuff that, you know, some people love. Others not so much. I think it's going to kind of fall into that category a bit. But, overall... I'm grateful we didn't just get another grudge movie at the end of January 2020. And to wrap things up. So all in all, Gretel and Hansel's not going to be for everybody, but it's at least a bit of a breath of fresh air from all the terrible horror movies we've been getting lately. So there is that. And uh, well, after watching this movie, I think I could safely say that I'm really down for some uh, fun 
comic book movie action next week. Starring a, a, starring a certain clown lady. Come back next week for my review of that. So, those are my thoughts on Gretel and Hansel. And again, if you ever make sure that subscribe button if you live talking by movies. And if you want to see more movie reviews like this, and check out this playlist up above here. But anyway, so... If you guys have seen Grill and Hansel and you want to give your thoughts about it, then tell me about those thoughts down below, and we'll see you on the backup side.